this thing started and rock and roll in here. So what I found out the last two, uh, two sessions is that, you know, an hour goes by really quickly. So, um, and so we want to make sure we take full advantage of the time and capabilities of everybody here at the board for your standpoint. Anyway, so uh, glad everybody's here today. Um, we have uh, a couple of uh, this is a good information along those lines that we'll talk about. So we're going to kind of continue our mastermind session number two, uh, which would be great. And hopefully a few people will be able to uh, provide some inputs, uh, some suggestions here. We'll talk, we'll start soliciting those here shortly. Uh, we also got to talk about creating on, uh, on demand emails or on brand emails, I should say. And so we have, uh, you know, uh, I'm Brendan from uh, NAC will be with us uh, today from that standpoint. So with that, you know, uh, you know, this is the, the lovely world that we're in, right? So I, I thought it was quite humorous, actually. So my daughter said to me actually this morning, I started laughing a lot loud enough to actually, I decided I'm gonna add it for, to our presentation today. So, uh, but uh, I do know some of this been there, right, Andrew? Yes, actually, uh, uh, yes, I've been to Fiji. It's, uh, <laughs> it's beautiful, so. Sorry, I, I was trying to multitask there for a second. But yes, it's beautiful. Here's the thing about Fiji. Um, it is a third world country. Like we don't think about it as a third world country, but it totally is. And then the other thing about it is, is that in Fiji, there's a huge divide between the native Fijians who feel like they own all the land, and then also what they call the Indo-Fijians who basically run and own, run everything. Um, about half of the uh, population of Fiji is actually made up of the descendants of Indian slaves who were brought over to Fiji by the British in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And so there's significant racial divide there. Um, so imagine you know, that plus that there are third world countries and you can get a sense of what Fiji is actually like. It's gorgeous and beautiful, but it is, it is a country ripe with strife. Right, but this is my this is my excuse. That way, you're not going to Fiji this year. So <laughs> right, right, because you're yeah, you usually don't go because you're poor, right? Poor yeah, that was kind of that was kind of a once in a lifetime gig. I have to yeah, I know that sure. I was giving you a hard time about that. Oh good, no, you're good, you're good. Good for pictures though, by the way. So I thought it was kind of interesting though. So yeah, yeah. So we're all in all the different areas. You know, here in Utah, we seem to be doing a little bit better than other places of the country. So uh, as I've talked with other folks, uh, so, which is probably a good thing. So if you're here, you know. You know, it's, it's been kind of nice, but if the other areas, uh, there's still, there's a lot of places locked down. So feel, feel good about where we're at the moment. So let's go through a few things in regards to the, in regards to some housekeeping items, our uh, community schedule. Um, and I mistyped that one. It's not that, so we'll skip through that. <laughs> I forgot the type of things along those lines, but uh, we'll also talk about mastermind session. Uh, also, I'll just let you know the, some of the house rules here from the standpoint. Obviously, this is a great place. It's a safe environment. Share what you have, good information. That's kind of what the mastermind says <laughs> be about as well. Um, kind of, uh, we want to make it open, collaborative, fun, enjoyable, uh, professional. Also, no, no, all are welcome, right? Uh, you know, you know whether you've been to Fiji or not, <laughs> we still welcome you. Um, or you're from, from our friends up north in Canada, we still welcome you, you know, so uh, uh, along those lines. Uh, so, yeah, it's a great place from that perspective. Um, some other things really quickly, I'm sure that you've heard about the Experience uh, Makers uh, session that's coming up here in July, the 22nd through the 23rd. Uh, feel free to uh, log on and, and join those sessions. Uh, there's going to be some great presentation materials and uh, updates, kind of, a conti kind of a continuation of the summit a little bit, kind of spread things out a little bit from that standpoint. Uh, but uh, feel free to uh, join and participate in that uh, for those couple of days. Um, we still strongly encourage you to subscribe to the Marketo Virtual User Group, our YouTube channel. Uh, and I say ours, but it's really uh, actually glad that Michael Tucker's here. He's the one that kind of put together. He's kind of leading the virtual user group, Marketo user groups for the last year and change. And um, we've all been learning from him in regards to how to run these virtual stuff. But he put together a YouTube channel where a lot of the, uh, the other user groups are actually uploading their recordings and stuff like we've been doing today. So take full advantage of that one. And in addition to that, make sure that when you go on to that mugs.marketo.com, uh, when you log in, you can actually see a whole bunch of other mug meetings going on and all the other mug leaders and teams are open to participate. So if you see a topic you like, feel free to join them, you know, but participate. So that's great. Uh, also encourage you to join the uh, Mops Professional Slack group. 
Um, we actually have a sub channel there for Salt Lake City as well. So we definitely want to strongly encourage you to participate in that. Lots of good information on that channel. Um, it's a great place if you go to the community and to that channel, you know, most of your answers are uh, questions are answered. So which has been great. So great uh, community for people sharing good ideas and stuff along those lines. Uh, and lastly, but not the leastly, is thank you for those that provided feedback on the survey last month. Um, in regards to uh, obviously, it was kind of kind of an incentive for those who participate in the survey for that gift card from uh, Ribbon. But at the same time, Andrew, I are greatly appreciative of all the feedback you guys have given to us from that standpoint, uh, and we're going to utilize that going forward. All right, so our upcoming meetings. Uh, so today, uh, we'll be talking about creating on-brand emails. Uh, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And we're also gonna have our mastermind session number two uh, for the second half of the session today. Uh, next in July, we're looking at actually basically just gonna have kind of like a working session, kind of like a mastermind working session in July. Uh, normally, we take July and August off, but because we're all virtual, uh, we figure we can take an hour over time. So we're targeting the, the 15th, so it's the week before the Pioneer Day. Uh, weekend. So even though we won't be in big, big parades or rodeos and stuff going on, we still get the day off. So that's a good thing. So um, it's just a matter of what we want to enjoy and do with it. Um, and then I believe it's August, we're going to take the, that, that month off as a summer break and then we'll kick back up in September and we'll kind of see how things go in regards to the whole, you know, whether or not we're going to still be virtual, if we're going to be able to get together, we'll cross each bridge as we get to it um, from that standpoint. So uh, mastermind session number two. So if you're with us last month, we basically, and Andy, you can jump in here along those lines, but uh, uh, this is a, an idea of Andrew's and ran over really well and a lot of you enjoyed it. So basically what this is really the uh, ability and opportunity for you to share or nominate any issues, challenges that you have. And it doesn't have to be Marketo related, it can be about other things, but most of the ones we got last month were all Marketo related, but allows you to, uh, Nominate your kind of your challenge, the thing that you're working on, and then uh, basically allow the rest of the group here to actually kind of jump in and you have a team of, you know, 15 or 20 people to really provide some input and support to help you out. Um, so uh, anything else along those lines, Andrew, that I know I probably slaughtered it a little bit, but. Oh, no, you're <laughs> no, 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 no. That was great. Yeah, just if you've got, uh, you know, remember from our last time, our uh, mastermind sessions, this is, we uh, put your uh, your problem, whatever your issue is, it can be Marketo related, it can be marketing related, it can be operations or Salesforce related, whatever it is that you want to talk about, uh, except for probably personal problems, although I suppose we could help with those, um, <laughs> uh, is you'll want to just put that kind of thought in the chat. So, uh, while that comes, uh, while we're having our other discussion, uh, we get prepared for that and get a chance to kind of understand how things go. And then somebody will be in the hot seat. And the first couple of minutes, the goal is to kind of, the goal is to kind of come in and give as much context to your particular problem as possible, uh, and then open it up to the group. And as a group, we'll work on this one problem together and come up with some ideas, some thoughts, uh, maybe a course of action that might help uh, for you. So. Um, uh, just a chance to kind of uh, utilize the collective knowledge of everybody here and collective experience to see how we could potentially solve a, a specific problem or even help you uh, undertake a new initiative. So again, it doesn't have to be problems, doesn't have to be issues. It can be just, hey, I want to do this or I want to try this. Do you want to have, do you guys have some best practices? Has anybody done this kind of stuff? It's just whatever's on, on your mind right now for uh, within Marketo or even like I say, just marketing issues. And, uh, and, and let's uh, work together uh, as a team to see if we can help each other out. So with that, so feel free to submit your uh, thoughts. Uh, Nicole, I know that if you're on, obviously, that we have the one from last time. So if that's still something that you want to talk about, I have that one in place, but feel free to renominate that or uh, submit anything else for uh, anybody else. So any challenges, issues? I know last month we talked about with uh, Western Governors, WGU, some things in regards to MSI and sync between Marketo and Salesforce and MSI. Um, Cameron just mentioned at the top of the, uh, the start of the, today's session that he actually was launching his new lead lifecycle stuff. Uh, so we had a couple of questions on that, but obviously it looks like he got most of those uh, completed. But if uh, there's other things that want, uh, beyond that, uh, feel free to do it from that standpoint. So those are some ideas and concepts that people submitted uh, last time. So. 
So we look forward to your submittals. So with that, um, we're going to turn the time over to uh, to our uh, to Brennan Farned, who is the CEO of uh, NAC. Uh, we'll talk about creating on-brand emails and uh, talks about kind of uh, really kind of how we can create and maintain branding with the emails and structures in regards to Marketo and allowing maybe even non-Marketo people using to create emails uh, without having access to Marketo. So. Um, and uh, we're going to say thank you to NAC again as a sponsor because they also have a nice little uh, giveaway for all of us who attended today uh, as part of that. So I, I don't want to spoil that spoiler there, but uh, stay in tune along those lines and know how to do that. So with that, Brendan, uh, feel free to uh, take over. I'll stop sharing and I allow you to share the screen. Thanks, Trent. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, look, I'm excited to, to be here. Uh, I've actually never been to Utah before, uh, so I'm excited to be in Utah right now with all of you virtually. Uh, I'm sure it's not as good through Zoom as it is in person, so I'm uh, looking forward to getting there one day. That'd be fun. Uh, so, uh, look, I hope uh, I want to use this time too to make sure that you guys actually uh, learn something, get something out of the session. Um, you know, I, uh, I don't want to sit here and talk at you guys uh, this whole time. That's really not my goal. Um, so uh, I'd love for this to be kind of interactive. I want people to interrupt me, stop me if you have any questions, thoughts, uh, any good jokes, you know, that kind of thing. Just please uh, stop me anytime. Um, and I, I hope uh, you guys learned something here. I know you guys are all uh, way smarter than I am, so uh, you know I think that might be might be a tall order. But uh, I, I know I've already learned something on this call already. Thanks, Andrew. I, uh, Fijian. I didn't know that was a word, so uh, that's awesome. I'm I'm already learning stuff, so it's great. Happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So um, cool. Why don't um, why don't I, I'm going to start sharing my screen here. Uh, I've got a slide deck to, uh, prepared for you guys, but again, I'd like this to be kind of fully interactive. So uh, if if you want to take me off script uh, here, and by the way, I don't have a script, so um, you know, just uh, ask me any questions, stop me. You guys think uh, maybe a demo would be more valuable, or just a conversation, or whatever? Um, just let me know. Okay. Awesome. So I'm just going to go into presentation mode here for a quick second. Can you guys all see my nice looking slide here? You can. Absolutely. Great stuff. Okay. So today we're talking about emails. Uh, so by, by uh, I know there's only a couple of you on your video, but uh, by way of hands, uh, who here uh, sends emails? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just say uh, I'm gonna assume everybody sends emails uh, in Marketo. If if does, is there anyone who doesn't send emails in Marketo? Great. Okay. Cool. So this should apply to everyone. I'm excited. So it should be relevant conversation. Um, you know, emails uh, can be seen as kind of a, a you know an old technology, old stodgy emails. Yeah, they've been around for a long time, um, but I would. I'm going to go ahead and guess that emails are, uh, if not, if, if they're not your most important channel, they're one of your most important channels and certainly uh, a big part of your, your marketing strategy and, and what you guys are doing at your organizations. Um, so email, even though it's old, it's still relevant and, and still a very important uh, channel. At least that's what we hear from, from most Marketo customers. So, uh, a little bit of what we're going to talk about today, a little bit about my story. Uh, I'm a career marketer, just like you guys, uh, potentially, uh, you know, I, I feel like I've, uh, you know, been in your shoes, although I'm not, uh, again, I'm probably not as smart as you guys all are, but, uh, you know, uh, I spent a lot of time uh, of my career, a big portion of my career in marketing, um, uh, and then kind of flipped over here to NAC uh, now. So I'll tell you a little bit about my story. Uh, I'm going to tell you a lot about what we're hearing from marketing operations people and specifically uh, Marketo marketing operations people out there in the industry uh, and specifically about, you know, what's happening with, uh, with their emails and their email creation for Marketo. Um, we also do every year we do uh, an email benchmark study here at NAC and uh, we've got some really interesting re results to share with you guys. 
um, uh, around that. And uh, we also built a bit of a kind of a maturity model. And this is really about, uh, or, you know, really stems from all of the conversations that we've had. I personally um, get to talk to customers uh, every single day. So uh, I've talked to now, I want to say thousands of Marketo customers. Um, and we kind of built this maturity model based on what we what we're seeing uh, customers are doing uh, for their email creation. So um, so I'm excited to show you that it's not just a model; it's it's real. It's right from from the mouths of of Marketo customers. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about our solution, but uh, we may not have time to get there, and that's fine. But uh, I'll give you guys an idea of kind of what what we do. Uh, so. Most importantly, up front here, uh, right after this event, we're going to be uh, giving out a $10 Grubhub uh, e-gift card uh, from us here at NAC. Uh, so you have to pay attention. That's really important. No multitasking, that, or else you don't get the gift card. And we're, we're don't ask me how we're policing that, okay? But we are. I'm only kidding. Okay. Uh, so, all right, a little bit about me. Uh, I started my career off at a company you guys uh, may have heard of called IBM uh, through an acquisition uh, of a company called Cognos uh, based here in Canada. Uh, and uh, so, you know, essentially starting my career at, at Big Blue, I, I was kind of an entry level uh, campaign marketing manager, uh, then transitioned to do some product marketing. Uh, but we were actually a, an Eloqua shop at the time. You guys can all you know, throw up in your mouths now. Uh, but, uh, you know, we were actually an early adopter uh, of Eloqua uh, back in kind of the, the mid or early 2000s. And so, um, you know, I spent a lot of time kind of around Eloqua at that time and, and uh, you know, personally kind of felt the pain uh, at that time of, of uh, you know, creating emails at scale. Creating emails back then was really difficult. Uh, and it turns out, uh, you know, not to spoil uh, the, the presentation here at all, that's still happening, uh, you know, 15 years later. So, um, you know, email creation is still hard. Uh, so uh, anyway, fast forward a little bit. I jumped into a, a, a fast growing security startup uh, here in Ottawa called Titus. We were about 50 people at the time. Uh, I ran product marketing there uh, and worked really, really closely as you do with, uh, with any startup. Uh, really closely with our, our demand gen team. And we had just implemented Marketo at that company. And uh, again, one of like Marketo's very, very early customers. Uh, and this is where I worked actually really closely with the CEO of NAC. And, and we worked together on building email campaigns or campaigns generally, but uh, obviously that, that uh, you know, included emails. Uh, so we're, we're was pretty close to kind of the email creation side of things uh, there as well. I eventually got uh, jumped into a, back into kind of a big uh, enterprise again, a company called Trend Micro. Um, and I started off in doing some product and solution marketing there, but uh, moved into actually uh, basically to, to through implementing the Marketo platform globally at Trend Micro, uh, moved into marketing operations and analytics there. Uh, we, I led the implementation of Marketo there. Uh, basically like formed the the marketing ops practice uh, there at Trend Micro and uh, you know with the backbone of course being Marketo and this this is really where I learned a lot about you know not just kind of using Marketo and uh, you know trying to execute campaigns and create create things uh, you know to execute in marketing uh, but I was kind of responsible for the implementation uh, setting up the, the processes, enabling the users around the world to, uh, you know, execute marketing campaigns uh, all through Marketo. And this is really where I learned uh, the nuts and bolts and I think really the struggles of uh, specifically email creation in Marketo. Uh, and we spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, you know, setting up uh, our, our email, you know, specifically our email, uh, you know, uh, scenario to be really easy, uh, to be, you know, user friendly. Uh, we we're, you know, hoping that this was really going to mark this Marketo implementation was really going to help our relationship with all the regions around the world because they're going to love using Marketo every day. Uh, and, and I quickly found out that, uh, that that's actually a lot harder to do than, than it sounds. 
uh, and there's Marketo's fantastic platform, but um, you know, can be difficult to use for some people, and um, uh, especially around email creation, as as uh, as you may, many of you may know, as uh, it's not it's not uh, out of the box. Certainly, is not the the easiest thing to use in the world. Uh, and then uh, I was kind of approached uh, again by our CEO here at NAC, uh, and and we kind of uh, got got this this NAC thing going. Uh, and we kind of, because we kind of grew up with Marketo, we started in the Marketo space and we still have the majority of our customers uh, are using Marketo, even though we now integrate with multiple marketing automation platforms like Eloqua, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, Pardot, and others as well. So that's me. But here's kind of the, the main thing. And I want to, I would really love to hear from you guys on whether, whether or not any of these resonate with you. This is, these are things that I personally hear from customers every single day. Uh, the first thing uh, is around coding, right? Creating templates, custom coding templates is hard. Most companies can't do it themselves. Most companies have to uh, you know, engage with an agency, get custom coded templates based on their designs maybe, right? Those templates are coded once uh, you know, at a, at a point in time. So whether they render tomorrow and any new email clients is, is kind of, you know, the, all bets are off on that. Um, you know, that's a, a tedious process to actually get templates built. I don't know if you guys have gone through that, but working with an agency to build templates or, in it, or you know, uh, you know uh, maybe even uh, valuable internal resources, uh, it, it's a really time consuming process, um, you know, going back and forth. It can be very expensive as well for, for companies who are using agencies uh, to, to build those templates. And even then, you know, I talked to customers who they worked for months with an agency on building, you know, I, I call it the, the Lord of the Rings strategy, the one template to rule them all kind of kind of thing right and and they oh we got all the modules in here that we need and we're you know we worked with this great marketo consultancy and you know they coded it out it took months of back and forth and blah 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 and even then their users are breaking the template in the marketo editor right they the somehow oh, the mar the mobile responsiveness is broken again i got to go into the code and fix that oh we went through a, a big rebrand six months after we got all our templates done. So we got to redo all the templates, right? Uh, not a fun scenario. Uh, also users, right? Uh, they, they're going and doing whatever they want in Marketo. Marketo can be, as you guys know, a little bit of the wild west sometimes. So uh, users can kind of go off and build emails they want, upload their own HTML, uh, you know, uh, start messing around with the code on, on their own if they have those kinds of skills and, and there's no real controls in the Marketo platform to control that, right? Uh, so your users can essentially kind of get out there and build any email design they want, you know, a little scary. Um, I also talked to a lot of ops teams who are completely overwhelmed with all the things that they're doing, right? Uh, I think Andrew, was it you or, or, uh, I can't remember who was, uh, maybe Kevin, you guys were, you were saying that you got, just got all your, uh, all your programs up and running, all your data management programs and stuff uh, going in your new Marketo instance. That's the kind of thing that operations people need to be worried about every day, right? Making sure that, you know, all of those things are working properly, leads are flowing to the right places, all that fun stuff. But of course, ops people get hit from all sides with tons of different things, even, and even things like a user having trouble, you know, putting tokens into their email or they broke the email template again i need you to go in and troubleshoot all that kind of stuff so you know ops teams are kind of are doing so much now uh and the last thing they need is to go in and troubleshoot a, an individual email uh right that, that can be tough <clears throat> so the other thing that we hear a lot i i hear this uh more and more actually recently where um ops people would really love to get their users out of the Marketo platform as much as possible. I, I'm not sure if you guys, uh, you know, appreciate that uh, statement at all, but uh, I know, you know, back at Trend Micro when, when uh, you know, our ops team, we had uh, 150 some odd people uh, who had Marketo access. Uh, and we actually did every quarter, we did a big uh, review. Who are those people? Do they need access? What are they doing in the platform? You know, why, why do they need access? What level of access do they need? Do we trust them 
Do they have the training, uh, you know, to have the level of access they have? Uh, all of that can be really difficult to manage. Uh, so, so that's something uh, that we hear all the time. Uh, and then, of course, right now, right, uh, companies are cutting costs, are trying to be as efficient as possible, um, really trying to kind of uh, save money and, and streamline processes as much as they can uh, now in this time. So love to hear from any of you guys. Does, do any of these things uh, resonate with, with any of you? See a couple head nods. Yeah. Good. Okay, cool. So sound maybe sounds familiar. Uh, anybody dealing with uh, difficult templates? Anybody like, is anybody here on the call actually responsible for managing their email templates that they maybe have had custom coded? I think one of the challenges that I see the most is is where a like a third party designer will uh, be responsible for kind of developing out content and they'll try to use one of those pre canned kind of master templates that rule them all kind of uh, scenarios and then have to change streams midway through developing the content and then ask you for to do some custom coding. So that's, I think that's probably a big one that, that kind of jumps out to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd, I'll love to chat a little bit about that as well um but yeah definitely that's something i hear as well any any other thoughts on this guys well, i know this is not a quiet group andrew and i both know that but you're all but you're all on mute so just unmute everybody and see what happens <laughs> well i think maybe we're quiet because i think this is somewhat covers it and Brendan you know we've talked uh, a lot about the templates uh, so yeah I agree with most of what's happening here thanks Nicole hey Hope hey <laughs> nice to chat with you again yeah I yeah I, I, I think these are probably pretty familiar to most of you guys and I, I think every company is kind of struggling with this scenario and especially if you've already invested in you know getting your templates created and custom coded uh, it can be tough to start thinking about kind of a, a different way to do things um, and so um, again that's kind of what we're, we're doing at NAC is, is it's a bit of a different way and uh, but I want to tell you guys that there's there's light at the end of the tunnel here I think um, you know the you know there, there is definitely a better way uh, to uh, to manage your email creation in Marketo for sure Cool. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, email benchmark report that we uh, we do every year. So uh, we've done a few of these, uh, and you can see we just wrapped one up last year. And uh, some of our kind of email benchmark data uh, here that we got out of our study. This is actually just so you guys know, the study goes out to, or it was filled out actually by over 200 Marketo customers, uh, and uh, they. Um, uh, you know, again, everyone talking about kind of their individual email uh, performance data and things like that. We have a few other questions I'm going to show you here. But you can see here, like the the this doesn't look great, right? We've got some some data here that's going, you know, from 2018 versus 2019. Uh, you know, numbers are actually going down year over year. So deliver de deliverability rate. Is actually has gone down a little bit, uh, you know, year over year. Our the open rates gone way down uh, year over year. Click through rates have not gotten better. Uh, unsubscribe rates, uh, you know, still still up there. So, you know, uh, th there's there's kind of a I think a, a problem happening with Marketo customers here uh, for email, and there's some things that you can do to kind of help this scenario, right, uh, when, you know, uh, for, for your emails, right? So one of the things that we see, you know, email design is, is super important, right? You guys have probably all been hit with really nice looking emails and you actually open them up and you go, wow, I wish our templates could look like this or I wish our emails, you know, were this nice. Um, but really design trends and, and design changes rebrands, things like that are happening all the time. 
Uh, and marketers need to be able to kind of react to those things and actually kind of it really design emails, uh, you know, uh, when, when they need a new design, keep emails, uh, email designs fresh, make sure they're on brand, you know, in, you know, you're quick to respond to a rebrand or a recoloring or, you know, something like that uh, in your organization. And so what happens is uh, if you're relying on email templates, right, you're basically it, getting into the code, right? Every time, if you if you need to update an actual template design, you're either getting into the code yourself or somebody in your organization's doing it or an expensive agency is having to do it for you, uh, right? And so this can be this can be tough. So a lot of our customers, a lot of uh, the, the respondents of this survey, the, the, the Marketo customers uh, are basically doing design changes very often. Right, uh, and so you need to be able to kind of respond to that quickly. Team structure as well. This is something I, I you know, I talk to a lot of customers about all the time. Uh, a lot of marketing teams aren't really sure how to structure their team. Right, um, you guys might be in the same boat. Right, so uh, a lot of uh, teams are are kind of testing out different uh, different perspectives here, trying a centralized approach, trying a decentralized approach. Uh, I know in my past life, uh, we were trying to decentralize our marketing as much as possible, right? We wanted to give the people in region, all our field marketers, as much autonomy as they, as we could give them so that they were able to actually go and, and execute, uh, you know, as much as they wanted. Um, but of course, you know, there's some things that you can allow them to do. There's other things that, you know, they're not able to do. Um, so, you know, usually customers end up in some kind of kind of hybrid structure where they're decentralizing lots of things or arming their field marketers uh, to be able to execute themselves uh, while still kind of centralizing some of, of those, uh, those functions. Any thoughts, guys? Does anyone... Is, is anyone running kind of a totally centralized team? Like just basically you guys are a service center for the entire organization. Anyone doing as like a, a super decentralized scenario? Yeah, we're kind of doing the decentralized approach. Uh, we've got two marketing ops managers and then, Outside of that, we're in the RevOps team, and then uh, our demand gen team has three email marketers now, and they're responsible for running all the email campaigns. But um, yeah, they kind of run the email templating there as well. Nice, very cool. And do you guys centrally manage your templates, or that that's managed actually by those by those people? Uh, they use an outside service to create the templates. I'm not actually sure if they use Knack or not. Um, so that's where they kind of create those templates and then import the HTML from there. Got it. Got it. Interesting. Nice. Cool. All right. Last piece on this uh, approval processes. And does is there anybody? I'd love to hear from you guys on this one. Um, do do you guys maybe personally or or uh, part of your team? Uh, do, do you all uh, approve emails before they go out? Does anyone look, review, and approve every email before they go out? Yeah, we do. So we got to make sure multiple eyes are hitting it. So I work for, I guess, a global church where to be protective of that brand, they've got to have multiple levels of, you know, just approval. So it's actually yeah. a lengthy process, but yeah, we've got to one, make sure that the content is right. And the, the imagery is licensed correctly, all that. So yeah, we've got an extensive approval process. Nice. And, and where does that actually happen, Adam? Is it, uh, is it happening? Like, how does that work? Is it like, I see a lot of test emails being sent from Marketo. Is that, is that how you guys do that? Uh, usually we have to, the best way and most efficient way is to get the templates pre-approved and then making sure that they're pulling from an asset library that's approved. And then when it comes to copy, copy, we're a little bit less strict on, um, you know, so it depends on if it's U.S. and English based or if it's 
Portuguese and Brazil. If it's outside the U.S. international, it's a little bit more flexible on what we're able to do. Uh, U.S., yeah, there's it's much more complex. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. And so, so how does the copy get actually approved in the final email? If there, if you know, your marketers are using the templates. Is there somebody who's also approving the copy once it gets into the template? Yeah, there is. So, like I, I mentioned, so English. We have specific divisions that have to give that approval. Right. Um, outside the U.S., it just comes down to you know, whoever's over that area that gets those approvals. So and is that it, happening? That's happening in Marketo. Uh, it's no. It's usually happens outside the Marketo. Okay, got it. Test emails and things like that. Mm -hmm. Exporting HTML. Yeah, it's, I mean, one. It's for copy. It's easier just to send the copy across you know, let them know what a template, like it, it just depends. Like if it's a visual aspect, yeah, we've got to provide the full template. If it's just copy, which is easier just to send them in, you know, a word document. Yeah. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. I, I mean, and that's, this is an interesting one because we're seeing a lot of customers using some kind of project management uh, solution like Reich, uh, you know, Workfront, Asana, uh, you know, lots of other tools here that, that we're hearing uh, these days. But uh, typically, any customers that aren't kind of using those kind of more sophisticated tools, uh, you know, they're, they're mostly either, you know, yeah, downloading HTML locally, attaching it to an email, sending it to the people for approval, you know, if feedback happens, and then they got to go back into Marketo, make changes, do the same process over again, download the HTML, send it, you know, in an email. It's not the most efficient uh, efficient process for sure. Uh, and then all the feedback is kind of lost, right? It's in everybody's inbox. It's not actually kind of captured anywhere. Um, so, so that is kind of, uh, 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 you know, definitely an area that we see uh, a lot that customers need to, to improve on, or, you know, we've all got, you know, you guys are all Marketo people, you know, how many test emails do you guys get landing in your inbox, uh, every single day? Right. I mean, I used to get probably 10 or 20 of them every day just, and I had no, no context on what they are, what they're for. Uh, am I, what am I supposed to do with it? Uh, you know, uh, it gets a little crazy at times. I'm sure you guys are living that too. Cool. And one, sorry, that's not, I, I lied. This is, this is the last thing. Uh, but one of the things that you can also do to stand out with your emails is, is include things like gifts. Uh, so, you know, uh, a lot of marketers are not using gifts or a lot of Marketo customers are not using gifts in their email today. Uh, but definitely this is kind of something that we're seeing a lot and we're starting to use a lot in our emails and, uh, and we're seeing some really good results, uh, with those. So, uh, yeah, animated gifts are kind of, uh, kind of exciting right now for email. So, Going back to what we've heard from customers, one of the things, and we're going to talk a little bit about what, what NAC uh, actually does, but um, before we do that, one of the things that we, we do, I mean, we're an email creation platform, so you basically can kind of create your emails all in our platform, and once they're created by anyone, it's all in a drag and drop editor, um, you can send them through an approval process, you can add feedback, you know, go back and forth, make edits, all that stuff. And once the email is done and completed and fully approved, maybe, uh, only then can the email be synced across into Marketo and it can go right into a program as a completed asset in the program. Um, so that's kind of like what we do. One of the things that we're excited about launching here next month uh, is the ability not just to create emails and sync them into an existing Marketo program, but also actually do the Marketo program creation all from NAC. Uh, so you can actually uh, not just build an email, you can also uh, create a program, which is it's actually just cloning uh, an existing kind of program template. Uh, and basically your users can create the email, can clone the program, and sync the email right into that program uh, so that it's fully ready for, for execution uh, sort of thing. Anyone have any, just that's like a very high level what we do, anyone have any kind of thoughts or questions about that? Are you familiar with Jetto at all? 
Jetto, I've heard, I've heard of them. Um, yeah, is that, do you guys use them at Podium? Um, I've been just playing around with it. Um, they gave us a, um, a little pilot um, to go through and it's doing a lot of the, doing a lot of similar things to where it's um, basically using the um, asset API for from Marketo to um, build and customize the different programs and clone them and then go back and forth, you know, with uh, um, reps that are wanting to clone them and the templates that we've built in that little program. And then they're able to push all those changes to a program in, in Marketo. But um, I mean, there's definitely a need for, for this. Um, so I think the more the merrier. Um, I'm excited that that people are starting to realize there's a hole in um, allowing non-technical people to um, get their hands dirty in Marketo and um, having the Marketo administrators and um, systems admins, you know, giving us a way to just empower them to where they feel like they're making progress and they're building things and they're doing things and not just twiddling their thumbs and waiting until, uh, you know, the, their little image that they sent us is magically turned into a email. <laughs> yeah. And, and actually that's great. I'm glad you brought that up, Greg. Um, because one of the, one of the things that you would still be kind of tied to with a platform like, like Jetto, for example, is getting all of your templates created, set up, managing them all the time. Uh, right. All of that stuff with knack. Uh, we really started with the email creation part of that whole story, right? Where we want to decouple uh, our customers' reliance on their expensive agency and managing those templates and even the Marketo editor altogether, right? So, um, so that's where we really differentiate is where um, even though we can do all the program creation things that it sounds like that Jetto does, uh, our email creation experience doesn't even rely on templates at all. Uh, you don't have to create them. You don't have to manage them. Uh, you build emails in Knack, drag and drop, never any coding required. Uh, and then you just sync them across uh, and you can create a program and uh, blah, 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 all that fun stuff as well. Yeah, cool that you're trying that too, Greg. We'd love for you to try Knack as well if, uh, if you'd be interested for, uh, to, to compare. Yeah, this is great stuff. You guys are yeah. smart people. Nice. Um, cool. Any questions uh, about that? Any other thoughts or questions? Cool. So I'm not going to go through this maturity model, guys, but, you know, we talked about all the problems, you know, related to email and email templates and all that fun stuff. And again, you guys uh, know that all better than I do. Uh, but, you know, Definitely, uh, I know Trent's going to send these slides out after the after the call, um, but definitely, you know, try to identify where you guys are at. We we feel like there's customers, you know, we're talking to customers in all different stages of of this maturity model. Where, uh, believe it or not, I still talk to customers who are coding every single email by hand for Marketo, and that's not a joke. That's like a, a real thing. Uh, you know, they get a design team to design the emails that gets thrown over the wall to the IT team who codes out the emails, works with the, the marketer on how, what content to put in there. There's this kind of like three way back and forth on how, you know, any feedback and changes and stuff. It's, it's unbelievable. So that, that still happens. Uh, most customers are kind of in stage two here where they're using templates. Um, you know, they, they're, you know, uh, got them coded once and they've, they've been using them. I talked to Marketo customers who've had the same templates for years and years. They've had issues with them. They probably aren't rendering properly all over the place. Um, uh, anyway, that's kind of very, I would say most customers are here. Uh, the third stage advanced templates, you can get pretty advanced with templates. I'd put actually Jetto in that, in that category, right? Where you can get very advanced. You can have highly tokenized content, uh, you can, you know, the one template to rule them all kind of strategy here. Um, 
but again, you know, any changes required, any rebrands that happen, design changes, all that stuff, uh, it just adds to the, you know, how expensive and time consuming it is to change anything in those templates, especially if you're kind of highly advanced with them. Uh, and then that's where an email creation platform really comes in. It offers the flexibility. Uh, you can, you know, enable users to build their own emails and, and even build their own programs and, and kind of you guys as ops people are totally hands off. Uh, and, and you don't have to rely on uh, even templates or the Marketo editor ever again. Okay, cool. So Trent, where are we at? I think I'm probably at time here. Yeah, we are, but uh, we haven't received anybody submit, want to submit anything for a uh, for a, for the mastermind stuff. So I mean, if this is of interest, we definitely might continue that. Uh, the other thing too is to uh, while we're talking, is if you haven't seen in the chat that if uh, if you want to receive your uh, your uh, Grubhub gift card, just send me the send me your uh, email address where you want to send it to. Because some people want to get to the work one, the personal one. Doesn't make any difference to us, whatever. But just let me know which one you want to send it to. So shoot that over to me in um, in chat or on my email address I posted there. Uh, and we get we get that the card to you. Um, and then uh, uh, Brandon, I know you're going to get the presentation from a standpoint. But then what about the? Uh, um, you want to send the link or something, or should we just send out a link to the uh, email benchmark survey and the maturity mod? Is the maturity model just the one that's right there in the slide, or is it a little bit more? Is more a document with that as well? We get to the team. So we're actually building a bit of a a, a bit of a, a document here that's a bit more uh, okay. in depth on that, but it's not it's not quite ready yet. This is just for this presentation. So, okay. uh, but yeah, you can yeah, we can send that out uh, to you guys once that's all done for sure. Cool. Yeah. So uh, we actually have one person that has a question about this stuff. So I mean, if we want to. If there's anything else for Brendan, uh, feel free, you know, just you can ask it now or, you know, Brendan, if you want to hang out for a little bit, if you've got questions afterwards, yeah. you want to hang tough with us for a little bit, that'd be great. Sure. That'd be great. So uh, let me do from there. So, uh, yeah, so thank you. I mean, this is good stuff. And like I said, I mean, if you want, to, you know, uh, long story short, I mean, I've heard about NACA stuff. It wasn't until about the last two or three weeks ago that I really had more in-depth uh, information and demo about it and stuff. And once I saw kind of what it, did and kind of how it able to make life easier for you know in this case obviously as i work for the agency for customers and clients but also if i had this beforehand it was just like wow this is really cool stuff so that's when i reach out to people at next saying hey you got to talk about this stuff and so if you haven't seen it you know definitely go on the website or just um ping brendan for demo and stuff because it's pretty cool stuff actually so i was just amazed about kind of what it can do and how it can make life easier for all of us so uh, from that standpoint. Anyways, that said, that, that's my you know pitch. That's why I brought Brandon on board here. So um, we got something from uh, Kana. So uh, Kana, so uh, so she has this point. So you know, you, so how this works with the mastermind session. So uh, Andrew kind of helped us out. So basically, we'll we'll talk about what you have, but you might have to kind of give some more background for the team. So you might want to put yourself on uh, off of mute and come into live. Uh, but here's what she wrote down if you didn't see in the chat. Um, they got a recent problem trying to have a good way to test dynamic email that leads to a dynamic landing page. Uh, so basically, she's getting a lot of pushback from the account team saying when they click on the test email, it's not leading to the correct segment on the landing page. So basically, they want to, they got dynamic emails, they got dynamic landing pages, and they're trying to test that out, but it's not, seems the test is not working out. But that's my interpretation. So, kind of, if you want to kind of Tell us kind of any more details behind that. Um, well, basically, we just have a bunch of emails with dynamic content um, and matching landing pages. And so when we send test emails to the account team for them to approve, you know, they uh, just come back and say it's not leading to the correct uh, segment on the dynamic landing page. So I'm not really sure what's a good way to test that. If nobody has an answer, I can take a guess at it. Go for it, Adam. And in this, it's been a really like two years since I've done anything with a dynamic uh, landing page. Uh, but when you send a sample email, 
you're able to select the person that you're basically spoofing for lack of a better term. And so yeah. select that person, uh, send yourself an email. And then I, I'm assuming Marketo also with the spoofed email is going to have the tokens attached to it. So you're basically acting as that person. And when you click on the link, it may take you to the dynamic landing page under their name as well. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I haven't tried that. I've only tried sending like a test email where you select the segment. Um, so maybe I'll try the person and see if Yeah, that works. Try, try a person. That may work. It may not at the same time, but my understanding is, is yeah, like you want to see it as that person. So by selecting yourself as that person, sending yourself the test email, it should have all the, the tokens attached to the links as well. Just, all right. Yeah, just know that, and I'm sure people have ran in this before, but anytime that you touch a link that's associated with somebody else, I'm sorry if you can hear my three-year-old, um, you know, anytime that there's like a forwarded email, you're attached to, and you click on their links, you are also become cookied as that person. Uh, so there's a chance that, you know, going forward, you may be cookied as that person as well. So just kind of watch that to make sure. Yeah, okay. I would agree with the Adam. It sounds like uh, Fadi, or hopefully I pronounced your name correctly, uh, kind of agrees with that perspective as well, Adam. And then uh, Kevin, I'm going to make a pitch here. So uh, for you guys, so um, there is a Clear Marketo's cookie fun little tool that the, the folks at Hypermedia uh, have, HyperX Media has put together. So you can go onto their website and download that one. That has been a game changer and a saver for me testing lots of emails and pieces of that puzzle. So you clear your, it clears your Marketo cookies automatically for you and you basically go to a, a zero state. So maybe I said that wrong, Kevin, but maybe you can kind of add some more. Yeah. yeah, thanks Trent. Yeah, it's just a Google Chrome extension. Can yeah. we share that in the link? I'd be interested to look at that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll throw it in there. Hold up. Yeah, thanks Kevin. Yeah, I mean, that, that's been a, it's been a game saver for me. So something like that, kind of what uh, Adam was talking about. Yeah, you know, I mean, you don't want to get yourself cookie to somebody else, right? You know, this thing you know you have all your forms start appearing with somebody else's name, but uh, um, it, it's it's been a it's been a game saver for me from that standpoint. So, but but yeah, what Adam said, I mean, not, that should work, right? I mean, it should work, but it'd be interesting to see kind of, uh, you know, you want to test it, make it let us know. Also, speaking about uh, Chrome, I'm not sure if, you know, I don't know if people use um, uh, IE or anything like that, but I found something buried in a Marketo release note uh, about four months ago, five months ago, but they're deprecating uh, support for Microsoft IE. So just kind of a FYI, I was just perusing through some of the old uh, release notes and that one caught my attention. So if you use IE, it's being deprecated in July, so um, so move to either Firefox or uh, Chrome, I guess we, is what this, they're probably saying. Maybe Edge, I don't know, but anyway, so. Oh, there's the link. Thanks, Kevin. Whoops, you sent it to me privately. I'll, I'll, I'll repost it for everybody here. Oh, Kevin did it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's all right. No, no worries, you know. I, I've done the same thing. Yeah. Uh, looks like Bill has a, a point too. So, Bill, what would you say here? Hi, everybody. I'm new to Mug. Um, I was just going to say that the landing page itself, um, there's a lot of cool stuff you could do uh, by utilizing JavaScript. You can actually display certain kind of copy or imagery or really anything through JavaScript based off of a UTM parameter that you can pass from an email. Great, yeah, so I obviously uh, kind of, uh, that's not working through the Marketo landing pages and stuff, maybe that might be, you know, maybe has some custom devs work that needs to be done there, you know, with um, Java and UTM parameters as well as I think what Bill's asking, mentioning. Cool. All right. Any other, anybody else have any other things? Does that help Kana, by the way? 
Um, I haven't, I'm currently testing it. I need to, <laughs> it's like a really big like, campaign. I need to like actually find one I can test on. Yeah, there you but go. Thank I'm you. Trying to do real time tests. We'll, we'll hang, I mean, if you can find some, I'll feel, you know, so, some of us will be happy to hang on for a little bit if you need to, to kind of see if it works. So um, I know that we're getting at the top of the hour, but so for those that have not sent me the email that you want those, the gift card sent to, please go ahead and throw it in the chat window or send it to my uh, email account that I got posted as well. I think there was uh, a few that have not done, you know, not done the call you out, but uh, so I know Bill, you just talked about some, you, you Vivian, Kana, uh, um, uh, Fadi, if you guys want to send me your information, that'd be great. So because, you know, might as well get a nice little uh, gift card here for 10 bucks, you know, that'd be great, so. Cool. Well, does anybody else have any other questions? So, I mean, feel free just to hang on if uh, you want to hang out, see if uh, uh, kind of has able to get this work. If not, we appreciate your time. If anybody has questions for Brendan, uh, let them know. Uh, thanks again for your participation. Also, thanks for the nice gift card, right? You know, get a little, get something delivered to our homes, you know, so. Thanks, guys. Really nice to meet all of you. Send me an email, brendan.nac.com, if you have any thoughts or questions. Um, happy to chat. Perfect. Well, thanks everybody. And uh, have a great rest of the day. Uh, kind of, uh, do you want some of us to hang on for you? Yeah, sure, I'm almost there. Okay. No problems, no problems at all. That's what we're here for, to help out, so. Oh, looks like just a few of us hanging out with you, kind of. We're good. Hey, how did it go? Um, so no, that didn't seem to work. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Did you get anything to work or nothing working at all? Um, well, I sent it to um myself as a different person. Um, but when I clicked on it, it's still not leading um to the correct segment on the landing page. Hmm. You think Would you, you mind could... sharing your screen? Would that be okay? I'm just really curious to see what's happening. Yeah. Sure. Hey, Adam. Hey, Andrew. When are we gonna hang out? I I don't know, man. Like, are <laughs> they gonna let us hang out? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I got uh, these Chinese family search people bugging me. Oh, you do? <laughs> who's uh, who's bugging you? Uh, Brian. We've just got oh. – it, it'll be interesting to see how it goes, but we've got a new convert, new Chinese convert campaign that's kind of <laughs> – it's big. But it's like 700 people it's going to, but each email is kind of – has like a dynamic where we're changing 